So you know how in between November and January, we have all those holidays in between that time frame. And if you're interviewing or if you're a job seeker, that can be such a pain because some people may be out of the office um, for that day, especially if the holiday falls smack dab in the middle of the week or at the beginning of the week. Some people will go ahead and take like that whole week off. And there sometimes will be multiple people that are out of the office during that time. And in the springtime, you don't have to worry about that. What's up you guys? Welcome back to the official Thompson Resume Writing Company YouTube channel where I share weekly tips and hints on how to update, refresh, and or prepare your resume and LinkedIn profile for your job search along with some career advice, some job search tips, and some personal stories of my own. I am Tamika Thompson. I am the owner and resume writer at Thompson Resume Writing Company and I specialize in transforming bland, lackluster resumes and LinkedIn profiles into powerful selling tools that help corporate mid level management and executive professionals land interviews two times faster if you are new to my channel welcome and I'm so happy that you're here I hope that you like this video enough to go ahead and be a part of my community by hitting the subscribe button below if you are a returning subscriber or a returning viewer thank you so much for always showing my content some love and staying loyal you are appreciated for this video I'm going to be giving you several ways that you can spring clean your resume for the spring season Let's get right into it. Spring is one of my favorite seasons of the year right after fall. There's something about spring that I just absolutely love. Maybe it's the birds chirping, maybe it's seeing the grass coming back up, maybe it's seeing the flowers, the flower buds start to bloom and start to sprout up out of the ground. I just love spring. Spring is the perfect season to deep clean your house, declutter your house or declutter your life, but it's also the perfect time to do some spring cleaning and some tidying up to your resume or maybe even your career or your LinkedIn profile. If you have not done to anything to either of those things this year thus far, last year, or in quite some time. A lot of people sleep on spring as far as job searching and career opportunities because it's not as popping or doesn't have as many opportunities out there such as fall and the beginning of the year. But spring is ripe with fresh opportunities just like those other seasons too. So first things first is that internships are starting to open up. So for my college students or people who are enrolled in degree programs, now is the time to start looking for those summer internships, those fall internships, and sometimes even for internships for the, for the next year if the internship is super competitive. You want to start getting your resume together so that you can start applying to those internships and begin interviewing for them. Next is that companies who did not do hiring uh, or a lot of hiring at the end of last year or at the beginning of this year, now is the time that they're going to start putting out job postings and making positions available. So not everyone hires at the beginning of the year, not everyone hires at the end of last year. Sometimes some companies do wait a little while longer maybe they wait until certain people are back in the office or maybe their fiscal year or their business timeline is a little bit different from other companies or from standard companies but now is the time that certain companies may be starting to post openings and put new positions out there and your resume needs to be ready for you to be able to apply to them. What I love in particular about job searching in the spring is that everyone is in the office. So you know how in between November and January we have all those holidays in between that time frame and if you're interviewing or if you're a job seeker that can be such a pain because some people may be out of the office um, for that day especially if the holiday falls smack dab in the middle of the week or at the beginning of the week some people will go ahead and take like that whole week off and there sometimes will be multiple people that are out of the office during that time and in the springtime you don't have to worry about that there's not a lot of corporate holidays or a lot of federal holidays during this time so everyone tends to be in the office if someone is taking a PTO maybe it's just a personal day and they will be back soon but it's not like they're going to be out for a week or sometimes two weeks at a time to where it severely impacts or delays your interview process Process. And in the summertime, that does, that does tend to be an issue as well because you have Labor Day, you have Fourth of July, and then you have Memorial Day. Anytime a holiday is in 
the mix, sometimes it can delay you getting an offer or getting through the interview process. And in the spring, you don't have to worry about that because everyone is there and there's nothing too crazy going on that's going to impact you being able to have some success. And then another thing that some people don't think about when it comes to job searching in the spring is that there are sometimes a lot more openings available during this time of year, especially if people have left the company between the beginning of the year and now, like if someone was promoted internally or if they decided to resign or leave the company to pursue an external opportunity. Well, now their seat is open and somebody needs to take it. It might as well be you. All of that being said, here is how you can prepare or spring clean your resume and your LinkedIn profile for spring opportunities or upcoming summer opportunities. For your resume, the first thing that you'll want to update is your contact information or your name if it has changed at all. So if you have relocated, you'll need to make sure that you update the city and the state. Again, you don't need to have the full address on there, just the city and the state, maybe the zip code if you're feeling fancy, but that's it. Your phone number, if you received a new phone number, you'll need to make sure that you swap out the old one with the new one. And that is a common mistake that I see a lot of people make. I cannot tell you how many resumes that I receive for for a critique or right before I have my consultation with my clients and their phone number is outdated or it's incorrect update your phone number or if you have not changed your phone number just make sure that the existing phone number that's listed on there is correct and that there are no errors your email address if you got a new email address or if you want to switch out the email address go ahead and make sure that you have that new email address on there for your name if you got married if you got divorced you'll want to make sure that you change your last name or if you've legally changed your name for any reason um, between last year and this year you'll want to make sure that you have the new name or the most current name on there. The next thing that you may want to tidy up on your resume to do some screen cleaning is your job history. So if you've landed a new job and you haven't added that new job to your resume just yet, you are going to want to do that, put the new position on there, enter in the year that you started, and then make sure that you have the end date or the end year of your last position. For the skills section on your resume, you'll want to add or include any new skills that you have acquired since the last time that you've updated your resume. And those can be soft skills, it can be hard skills, and it can also be um, industry related skills and software and systems as well. So if you didn't know Salesforce two years ago when your, last res when your resume was last updated, but you know it now, you'll want to go ahead and put Salesforce on there. If you have become a beast at like Zoom and SharePoint and Microsoft Teams within the past year and a half or in the past six months because of the pandemic, maybe you're now working virtually, but you don't have that software on your resume, go ahead and put that on there. Also, for your education section, if you received a new certification, if you attended a new training, if you attended a workshop, if you graduated, hello, if you got a new degree, you'll want to add that on your resume as well. Other things to do as well is to remove outdated information or information that is no longer relevant. So in a previous video that I shared to my channel, I talked about how you should not be going back more than 10 to 12 years on your resume. So maybe with your new job when you add that new job maybe that means that you have to take off an older position that's totally okay no nothing wrong with that as you progress in your career and as you continue to advance and grow and have new experiences, it's only right that you'll have to take off some things as you go along. So there's nothing wrong with going back to your resume and saying, hey, this position is a little outdated. It was, you know, maybe seven or eight years ago or I'm no longer doing that anymore. I'm in a whole new field. Let me go ahead and delete this and take this off. In the same way that you may remove experiences or old experiences from your resume, you can also do the same when it comes to education, skills, and software. So maybe there's some software that's currently on your resume that's a little outdated, or maybe it's just no longer relevant, you can go ahead and take that off. If you've learned more important skills or more prominent skills, you can go ahead and include the newer ones and maybe swap out some of the older ones that you still know but maybe aren't as 
important as they used to be or are maybe a little bit lower on the totem pole when it comes to skills priority in your field. For example, maybe you're a manager, but you have entry level skills on your resume still from when you received the entry level position and you've advanced to a manager. Well, you don't need to have those entry level skills on your resume anymore. You're more than likely going to want to focus only on the management related skills. So you can go ahead and take those old ones off. As far as spring cleaning your LinkedIn profile, what you're going to want to do, number one, first and foremost, is to update your profile picture if you have not done so in a while. Now, I see this a lot. People will email me or message me or send me the link to their LinkedIn profile to critique, and sometimes it's a super outdated photo. I've even seen some adults with like their high school graduation pictures as their profile picture, or maybe a picture from their wedding and they're cropping somebody out. No, no, no. Go ahead and update your LinkedIn profile photo. Take a nice photo of yourself, either using a camera on a timer or having someone take a photo of you, maybe a friend or a family member, or you can schedule a session with a professional photographer to get some professional headshots. But first things first with that LinkedIn profile is to update that profile picture. The next thing that you'll want to do after that is to update your LinkedIn profile banner. So the LinkedIn profile banner is the image that goes behind your profile picture on LinkedIn. So if that photo or if that banner is blank or if it's one of those generic um, LinkedIn templates that they kind of just assign to the account or the profile if you don't have something custom uploaded you need to have a banner that is there if you have a current design but maybe you want it refreshed feel free to design something new yourself in Canva or maybe reach out to a graphic designer to create a new more updated refreshed banner image for you and just like you would your resume on LinkedIn, you also want to go ahead and update your contact information. If your email address has changed or if there is a new email that you prefer instead of the one that you formerly had, go ahead and update it. Also, go ahead and take off older jobs on your LinkedIn profile. Go ahead and add new jobs to your LinkedIn profile and make sure that you have the end date or the end time frame of the last position that you had before this one. Um, add new skills to your your new pro to your new LinkedIn profile and that can include a range of skills hard skills soft skills software etc I believe the LinkedIn section allows or the LinkedIn skills section allows you to have up to 52 skills listed so you can mix those up however you want to 20 software 20 hard skills 20 industry skills however way you see fit but if you have newer skills go ahead and add those skills to your LinkedIn as far as career spring cleaning, what you'll want to do is maybe make some changes to your career plan if you have one. If you don't have one, put that on your list to get a career plan, to work with a career, a career coach to create a career plan for you that includes the goals that you're looking to accomplish within the next three years, five years, seven years, along with some actionable steps that you'll need to take to make those goals happen and make them come into fruition. Um, another thing to do, this is the perfect time to do, is to write down your quarter one wins and successes. So in your current job, have you worked on a major project from January up until now? Write that down. So open up a Microsoft Word document or a Google Doc, somewhere where you can track all of your wins and successes and maybe even recognition. So if you received an award at the start of this year, if your boss gave you a major kudos, if your team gave you a big shout out, or if you're able to pull data from the efforts that you've been doing this year so far, go ahead and pull that data and insert it into a document. And if you are planning to search for a job later on this year, or if you plan on updating your resume, you can ensure that you have that information so that you can incorporate that value into the document. If you plan on making a career transition either this year or sometime next year, now is also the perfect time to, for you to start doing some research on the field or the industry or the role that you're looking to transition into. So start maybe setting up some virtual coffee chats with people who you may meet on LinkedIn. Start taking a look at what are you going to need to transition into that field. Are you going to need a certification? Are you going to need to learn new software? Are you going to need to go back to 
school for any reason what do you need to acquire now so that you can get there and now is the perfect time to start doing that research in a video that I shared to my channel a couple of weeks ago I opened up about my top five career regrets and that was one thing that I did regret that I made a career, a career transition without doing any research without doing any digging and without taking the proper steps to prepare to make that transition so please don't be like me start doing some research now if you think you're going to transition into something new either at the end of this year or next year doing that research and doing that homework now can make that transition easier for you and then last but not least if you plan on going back to school at the end of this year or early next year now is the perfect time for you to get a head start on doing some digging on the programs that you're interested in or the programs that you're looking at in particular the pricing of those programs and what is going to be the process and what are the materials that you're going to need to get into that program so in another video that I hope that I shared to my channel I talked about how I plan on going back to grad school and how I started the process of looking up different curriculum programs, uh, looking at different schools, figuring out the tuition costs, figuring out what or how I'm going to pay for it, and then also trying to figure out uh, or how I'm going to put together the materials that's going to be needed. Do I need a recommendation? Is there an application fee? Do I need to dig up my transcripts? All of those little steps that go into preparing to get into school, because there is a lead up to it, right? You don't just go into school. So if you plan on going back to school and now is the perfect time for you to start comparing and, and contrasting different schools, making a list, getting in contact with some advisors and figuring out what are the steps that you'll need to actually get enrolled and start knocking those steps out one by one. Those are some light spring cleaning tips for you that you can do for your resume, your LinkedIn or your career. I hope that you found this video helpful and let me know in the comments which one of these things you plan on doing this season to help you. Um, thank you so much for watching especially if you made it to the end of this video go ahead and give me a like go ahead and give me a thumbs up if you need assistance with your resume please feel free to reach out to me I am accepting new clients for the month of April my website is www.thompsonresumes.com you can also email me directly at hello at thompsonresumes.com also I do encourage you to please subscribe to my email list where you can receive weekly tips and hacks related to your resume your LinkedIn your career and your job job search I'll go ahead and drop the link below in the description box so that you so that you can subscribe also feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn my profile name is Tamika Thompson you can also follow me on Instagram at underscore Mika Thompson thanks again so much for watching and I will see you all next week with another helpful video bye you guys and happy spring